So whatever machine, the last one you put on the floor, I use this one because I can actually reduce scratches with different grips on the change up. If you got a pad, you can, uh, when we get going, I'll do the demo, you can use a thick pad, you can use a thin pad. Some manufacturers recommend either one. Okay, so I've got a pad on here. Sometimes I'll run two thin white pads, and the reason is I've got a pad I use for driving. That pad stays on there. When that machine's off, I stand it up or take take the driving pad off the buffer. And the reason is if I got this pad on there right now, and that handle's out here, whether it's a thin pad or thick pad, and that machine's actually pressing down on one side of it, how many of you have turned the buffer on? This thing starts doing this. Right. The reason is, if you let it sit with the weight on one side of the buffer, so you crush that pad. And when you crush that pad, you turn it on, especially if you're working walnut, you got cherry, if you got maple, you kick this thing back on, what's going to happen is you're going to transfer that movement back to that paper or to that screen, and you're going to leave those scratches of that footprint back in the floor. So you got to do a literally perfect job. Stop the buffer, go back over what they did, got that little bump in it. You know, and after a few minutes, you can see this thing kind of lighten up. But still, we're putting a footprint in that floor from the sandpaper. Whatever you're using, know how to change it up. If the pad's damaged, trash it. It's not worth buffing the whole floor with damaged pad. If you got something on your paper, your uh, your hard plating, your screening, your disc sanding, whatever it may be, and you crimp your paper, you run your paper up against the door jam, hard, whatever it may be, and you damage that paper, it could be brand new. Take it off. But if this thing got a tear in it or a buckle in it, what's going to what's going to happen to your floor? I can remember uh, this being 15 years ago. Wayne Lee and I were doing a job in St. Louis, about 3,500 feet. I was running a big sander. He was back in the back running the buffer with a screen. I don't know if you guys know Wayne Lee, big headed guy, retarded. Tennessee. <laughs> 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 He, he's a great guy. He's going to appreciate me talking bad about it too. So uh, I walk in there and said, hey, what are you doing? He looked at me and said, what do you mean? We both got our earplugs in or whatever. And I completely up the other end of the house. I said, what are you doing? He said, I'm buffing the floor. I said, what'd you hit? He said, I hit nothing. I said, stop your buffer. Stand it. You know, stand, we'll call it stand it down. Lay the buffer down and look at your screen. That is a big triangle cut out of a screen with it flipped over. Uh -huh. And I could hear through my earplugs and running the other sander, I could hear this. <laughs> well, back and there was, a, there was a metal piece in the bathroom doorway and he'd run up against that metal piece and rip that screen and roll it under. I said, get the vacuum, clean it, get down there and look at it. And sure enough, we've got these little curvy cues everywhere. But my point is, it's something as simple as that. You can keep buffing and now if this thing's going to dark stain, if it's going to water-based finish, whatever, you can see those scratches back through the stain or back through the finish.